Mapping out the career of a player is kind of fun. Finding a way to do it that's a little different, that's kind of fun too. So the, the, the request was made to do a video on Issa Tikkanen. It was made a couple weeks ago. Just like the request to do a video on Enforcers I haven't done yet, which is going to happen. Remember, the, long, <laughs> the more I delay doing the video on Enforcers, the better that video is going to be. So Issa Tikkanen is kind of a polarizing figure. You either think he's awesome or you think he was really funny. I don't know anybody who hates Issa Tikkanen. And yet it's it's interesting because there were a lot of moments during his career where I would understand fans disliking him, and I think they did, and potentially teammates and opponents disliking him, and I think they did too. But by the time it was all said and done, Teak was just Teak. So his first season, 80-45, he has three playoff games, and he wins a Stanley Cup. Oh, I forgot to put this here. He wins a Stanley Cup. Welcome to the NHL, kid. Three playoff games. Here's your cup ring. 85-86 for the Oilers. He plays 35 games, 7 goals, 6 assists, 13 points. And there's no talk about Tikkanen at this point that I can remember that he's going to be this big star player or that he's going to score a lot of points. Just that he's an agitating bottom six type forward and agitating is something that he's known for throughout his career. 86-87 happens. He has 76 games played, 34 goals, 44 assists, 78 points. The Oilers, during their dynasty, always were moving players out and players in. And they were lucky that they were so darn good when it came to their drafting and their development. And they were. They had some really good draft picks. And their development system was really, really solid. 78 points in 76 games for Tikkanen is, is fantastic. And it shows just how good he was as an agitator to get 78 points. And he had a lot of penalty minutes too. I just didn't have room to put all that on the board. But he always had penalty minutes. He always took penalties. Not stupid penalties. I don't remember him taking stupid penalties where you'd look after the game and say, oh, you know, they would have won that game if not for Tikkanen. Almost never heard that. 87-88, 80 games played, 23 goals, 51 assists, 74 points. And in his fourth season in the NHL, including that one where he had three playoff games and that was it, he has three Stanley Cups to show for it already. At this point, I had to be thinking, wow, they just give out Stanley Cups here in Edmonton. This is great. He wouldn't have been able to say it. The... The funniest thing with Tikkanen was you, you could never understand what the guy said. His own teammates never knew what he said. Um, and there was a famous comedy sketch uh, where stand-up comic said every every interview with Issa Tikkanen ended up with, ended with uh, take it a puck at a back at a net. And whatever he said before that, you wouldn't get a word of it. Uh, Peter Kalamis is the name of the comedian. K-A-L-A-M-I-S. Peter Kalamis. Uh, and he actually, Peter Kalamis had a really funny comedy special too. And and the Tekken thing was a big part of that. Where he played a, 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 a hockey player who was a great goal scorer and couldn't skate. And it was actually really funny. You know, they interview an old lady and they're asking her and she goes, Who? Who? Oh, you talking about that guy who can't F and skate? He's offside all the time? Like, it was just great. Uh, and and a center part of his comedy was Tikkanen. Tikkanen was that much of a polarizing figure that comedians had, in Canada anyways, had like 10 minutes of a segment all about Tikkanen. 88-89, he plays 67 games, 31 goals, 47 assists, 78 points. Tikkanen, uh, injuries start becoming a problem for him at around this point. And... Not so much that he missed games right off the bat, but we'll get to that later. So he has 78 points in 67 games. It's the best points per game that he has his entire career. And Edmonton fails to win a Stanley Cup. This was the first year after Wayne left. This was the year that Wayne eliminated them from the Stanley Cup playoffs. I believe it was, yeah, it was 89. And... There was talk about, well, maybe Edmonton's done. Maybe LA's the new power. 
Yeah, 89-90, 79 games, 30 goals, 33 assists, 63 points. And 89-90, the 1990 playoffs. I'm pretty sure that was the one I remember Wayne Gretzky losing his mind with Issa Tikkanen. Tikkanen and Gretzky had been, had been friends when they played together in Edmonton. Once Gretzky was wearing Kings colors, Issa didn't care about that once they hit the ice. He didn't care. So he was, he was not only shadowing Gretzky constantly and watching him constantly, he was talking to him constantly. And Wayne couldn't understand a word he said. Not a word. So that you could see, as Gretzky was leaving the ice, him yelling at Tikkanen, STFU, STFU, and Tikkanen on the Oilers bench laughing his ass off. He thought it was hilarious. That's how Tikkanen played the game. Talk to them. There were many, many players who said he never shuts up on the ice. Not for a minute. And it, was, it wasn't it was that he was bothering Wayne in terms of, oh, you're no good. It was like, how's it going, Wayne? What's up, Wayne? How you doing? Like, he was he was that little dog, Chip, who's with Spike, or a little, was it Spike? Or, anyways, he, where he's, you know, how's it going? How's it going? How's it going? And he's bouncing over the big dog, falling down the street, bouncing around. He was the little dog. That was Issa Tikkanen. Somewhere in the range of all of this, he committed the funniest thing ever in the history of hockey, where he tried to take Brian Hayward's goal stick and put it inside his jersey. And he got a penalty for it. I also remember him breaking his stick, turning to, I believe it was Peter Stastny, and taking his. Not holding his stick, just, thanks. And Stastny taking a penalty for hitting him. Tekin and thought outside the box. And it drove other players crazy. But again, none of these things that I'm describing here are particularly dirty. And they're not suspension worthy. They're just humorous. Because he sees things differently. 90-91. 79 games played. 27 goals. 42 points. 69 assists. But at this point, the Oilers are starting to lose their luster. They're starting to fall. 1990 was this great story. Bill Ranford was a fantastic story. That year won the Conn Smythe. Everything's great in Edmonton, but in 91, things started to show uh, in terms of the team being vulnerable. 91-92, he only plays 40 games, 12 goals, 16 assists, 28 points. This is where injury issues start to show up. 92-93, 66 games played, 14 goals, 19 assists, 33 points. He's... Uh, not scoring the way he was a couple years before. The Rangers make an offer to the Oilers. The, Ra the Oilers say, all right. And to finish the season with the Rangers, he has 15 games played, two goals, five assists, seven points. Not bad. And then in 93-94, that's not a typo. There were 84 games in a season then. He plays 83 games, 22 goals, 32 assists, 54 points, and gets himself a Stanley Cup ring. Everything's fantastic for the Rangers that night. A lot of former Oilers come together with that Stanley Cup victory and prove that once again, Edmonton reigns supreme. With Brian Leach, Mike Richter, and some Rangers mixed in. I don't know. The storyline was Rangers East. That's what, or Oilers East. The Rangers were called Oilers East at that point. And Tikkanen wins the Stanley Cup. Awesome. Mike Keenan goes to St. Louis. Who else goes to St. Louis but Tikkanen? Tegan in the only place 43 games in 94-95. 94-95 was straight short, straight shortened, or was strike shortened or lockout shortened. So I kept trying trying to say strike, and really lockout's what it was. 43 games, 12 goals, 23 assists, 35 points. It's not bad. He's still scoring better than he was here in Edmonton at the end of his time there. He only plays 11 games for St. Louis in 95-96. One goal, four assists, five points. Gets traded to Jersey. Only plays nine games with Jersey, two points. Tikkanen at this point had a lot of nagging injuries. Gets traded to Vancouver. Vancouver's trainers worked with Tikkanen. They worked to get, whether it was his back, ankles, knees, whatever it was, they worked to get everything that had been nagging and bothering him throughout these all these long runs. Remember, every time you see a star, that's a Stanley Cup run. So that's an extra 20-plus games added on to his season, except for this one where he only played three. 
But for these stars, that's an extra, basically an extra season on his body, right? And he doesn't play easy hockey. Tikkanen doesn't get a thousand penalty minutes in his career by playing easy hockey and staying out of the tough areas. So his body's taking a beating night in and night out. He ends up with 37 points in 38 games for the Canucks. Doesn't play all the games for the Canucks, but when he plays, he's very effective. And I really, really enjoyed him as a member of the Canucks, even though that team was crashing and burning badly. The following season, he plays in 62 games, 12 goals, 15 assists, 27 points. So again, he's back to playing almost every night, but he's lost a step. He gets traded back to the Rangers, plays 14 games, one goal, two assists, three points for the Rangers. And I remember him not being very complimentary of Vancouver on his way out the door, which bothered me because he played 100 games for the Canucks. He came over from New Jersey as damaged property. And the Canucks kind of helped him get a lot of that health stuff, or at least did their best to help him get his health in order. That they made a priority of making Issa Tikkanen the player he'd been, rather than what they were getting in trade. Coming out of those 14 games for the Rangers, they don't keep him. He goes to Florida. You know, where everybody goes to retire? Well, Tikkanen almost went there to retire. He plays 28 games, 1 goal, 8 assists, 9 points. Ends up in Washington. He plays 20 games in Washington, 2 goals, 10 assists, 12 points. And I have a star next to Capitals because that's the year they went to the Stanley Cup final. Issa Tikkanen was on the team. He, he played he played very well for, for Washington. And I'm not going to say he's the reason why because he wasn't. But man, Tikkanen was able to get even the Capitals to the final. So, feather in his cap for that. And then his career after that petered out at the NHL level. He's, he goes back to the Rangers in 98-99, plays 32 games, has three assists, and that's it. He finished his career up 99-2000. He played for uh, Jokerit, uh, played 43 games for them, 23 points, 85 penalty minutes. So he didn't become a nice guy when he went home. And uh, then he played in the German League, played 46 games uh, in Essen, uh, 29 points, 81 penalty minutes. And then he played in, I believe this is the Austrian League, ALH, uh, 25 points in 30 games. So 877 career games, 244 career goals, 386 assists, 630 points. And honestly, of all of the players that I've seen in, in hockey history, he might be the funniest. In my eyes, when I was watching hockey games with Tikkanen, I would usually laugh pretty hard. And I didn't cheer for the Oilers. I didn't cheer for the Rangers. I didn't cheer for the, the teams he played for. But here's what here's one thing I'll say, too. I really think this is the kind of career Sean Avery had patterned out for himself. But Tikkanen knew to pick his spots. And while, yeah, Avery was over-the-top and flamboyant and funny ish Avery was funny to himself Tikkanen was funny to everybody and he had his own language of Tikish I think that's even in here uh, there's personally Tikkanese okay this is from uh, the Wikipedia page Tikkanen is famous for his Finnish English sometimes referred to as Tikkanese or Tiki talk even members of his team often did not understand what he was saying. Wayne Gretzky once commented, he brings something special. I don't know what it is, but if you ask him, you couldn't understand his answer. Former Edmonton Oiler coach and teammate Craig McTavish said, Issa talks twice as much as everybody else. That's because he can understand just half of what he says. Even fellow Finn Yari Curry was not immune from the confusing language. During their tenure with the Oilers, Tikkanen let go with a particularly colorful pronouncement, after which another player turned to Curry and said, what did he just say? Curry just simply shook his head and said, I have no idea. Yari Curry, also Finnish, didn't get whatever the hell Tikkanen was talking about. And that's what makes Tikkanen great. He should be in the Hockey Guy Hall of Fame, shouldn't he? He really should. We'll declare this a pronouncement. Issa Tikkanen, as of this minute, joins... Tiger Williams and Pat Verbeek in the Hockey Guy Hall of Fame. Thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. And I'll talk to you again soon.